Okay, welcome everyone to the fourth episode of the No Stroke Podcast and the actual first episode that we're on live in location here at Theracycle Corporation, Xthera Corporation, right, in Franklin, Massachusetts. I'd like to welcome Peter Kaplan, head of marketing and CEO of Theracycle, and our co-host Michael Garrow, first time out in yeah, it's, lovely. It's nice here, fully vaccinated, being able to sit around and have a conversation. It's been a while. It's a so sweet thing, isn't it? It is. It is. It feels good. Back to it does feel good. And we're after hours here at your company. I have to say this is the most quiet I've ever seen it. So thank you for making arrangements not to Absolutely. have the bikes coming in and out. And I just like being able to shake hands. Now. That's a pretty cool <laughs> thing, right? Shake it's still hands. a little awkward that you you know. Knowing when you can, when you can't, but we're well, it's like we're you put the hand out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 you, 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 you got the hand, the fist, the elbow. <laughs> so, so let's dive into it because there's a like Bruins game three here starting in about an hour and a half, yeah, and I'm wearing uh, my Bruins yeah, color all all dressed up. So we have a lot of questions for you, and uh, I'd like you to start with if you wouldn't mind just telling us about your background and um, you know how you got here. Sure, absolutely, and and thanks for having me, guys. This is. Um, Really, uh, you know, something that uh, I enjoy doing and telling people about our company, about our business, and and where we're heading because there's a lot of really truly exciting things that are happening at at Theracycle X Thera Corporation. And uh, so, you know, I started. I've been in the healthcare business for about 16 years. Worked for a company called uh, Cardinal Health, which you might have heard of, uh, for uh, I mean, close to 13 years with a combination of Cardinal Health, Invacare. And Invicare is one of the largest durable medical equipment uh, manufacturers in the world. And then another company called Compass Health, Health Brands that uh, is also in the durable medical equipment. So been in the healthcare space for a while, um, been on the retail side, been on the manufacturing side, and been on the distribution side, wholesale distribution. Um, so seen quite a different, uh, different angles, worked with many different customers all around the country, all around the world um, in terms of healthcare products. And so this was really an opportunity to get into a situation that was really on the ground floor, really in the bunkers and working directly with consumers in, in really what's in a very underserved market for neurological rehab. And so you know, it's, it's a pretty big market, it's about a $3 billion market um, that it will be in about the next five years. Um, and it's growing at a very precipitous rate, unfortunately. Um, but there's really, it's an underserved market with a lot of, not really a lot of product that really addresses the needs that are out there for the folks that we work with. Um, so again, I've been in this space for a long time um, and you know, I've, I've always run businesses and you know, I've had my own businesses prior and got involved with this business because really uh, I looked at many different businesses, but this business, I really saw an opportunity because this company's, I call it an 89 year old startup. And so, <laughs> and it really point. is, you know, it's been around since 1932, uh, started out as the Exercycle company. And uh, the uh, person who started the company was a, uh, a electrical engineer and his wife had MS. And so he designed the first Exercycle product uh, basically to help her uh, provide therapy for, for her condition. So. It was really the first motorized therapy bike and the Exercycle really became the mode of choice for a lot of folks um, and a lot of very well-known folks, people like uh, Roosevelt and Eisenhower and John Wayne and uh, um, even Jane Fondas. I mean, a lot of people, uh, we even have pictures here behind me, you have Jackie Gleason and Jackie Lemon, Jack Lemon, who rode Exercycle. So it was really the mode of choice for, f not only for, conditions, but for fitness, you know, and then um, back in about 2001, the company pivoted, you know, there were a lot of different fitness products out there, and the company pivoted into the therapy space and came out with the TheraCycle. And so that's, you know, really where the company's focus has stayed through today, in terms of really focusing on neurological rehab for, you know, especially for customers who have Parkinson's, MS, and stroke, really the three core uh, areas that we focus in on. So uh, that's basically how I got here. And uh, yeah, it's been, I've uh, been here for about two years. 
and it's really exciting, um, you know, how we've been able to kind of turn the turn the ship around and really um, reinvigorate the company. Uh, changed a lot of different things from, you know, finances, marketing, production, really touching everything. And uh, you know, we're still really building out the company. Um, and but there's a lot of exciting things that I'm sure I'll share with you as we talk a little bit more. Yeah, good stuff. And what uh, for for those that might not be familiar with the Theracycle. What differentiates your product from, let's say, a new step or a product that someone might see in a PT clinic? Yeah, good question. And I think that the, the question that we get most often is how does it differ from a regular stationary bike? Um, but you know, the thing that we're doing at, at, at Xterra Corporation TheraCycle is really our goal is to revolutionize the therapy space, really creating create that that go to product that really is the starting point for somebody to really start their journey to rehab their situation, whether it be stroke or Parkinson's or MS or other neurological conditions as well. Um, so how does it differ from, from those two things? You know, first of all, you know, something like a new step is a great product. And, uh, but what it's, what I see it as is it really for somebody who's looking to, who's going through a situation like they might've been in an auto accident or, or had some of a spinal cord injury. Um, it's really meant for somebody to get start getting mobility back. You know, they've had an access of some sort and to help them get mobility back, get movement back versus a TheraCycle that's able to uh, run at a much higher level of speed. So, you know, I guess the first question is really, what is a TheraCycle? You know, what differentiates a TheraCycle? So the first thing has got a motor um, and pretty much anything else out there it's the only thing that really has a motor that helps operate it. It's got a very uh, extensive gearbox um, that goes along with that. So you've got the ability to have up to 50 miles per hour, one to 50 miles per hour. Um, so you've got a variable speed motor. And uh, what that does is allows the user to pedal faster and pedal longer than they could do on their own. Why is that critical? It's critical because what neuroplasticity, which is a kind of a part of this whole thing, um, it's a very important factor is it allows the brain to create new neural pathways that is a result of repetitive, robust exercise to get your heart rate up. Um, so that's what you get with a TheraCycle is this repetitive, robust exercise, getting your heart rate up, but it's that motor and the gearbox that allows the user, provides the assistance they need to pedal at a much higher rate of speed and to pedal longer than they can do on their own, that provides that the, the, to firing the neurons to create this neuroplasticity that helps to create new neural pathways. So without that motor, you don't have you're you're 100 reliant on the user to to pedal that cycle. And a lot of the customers we work with you know, are really challenged, especially day in, day out. Some days are good and some days are bad. Um, but consistently they have challenges using that type of a product where it's 100% reliant on, on the user. Now, going back to New Step, you know, New Step, again, a great product, but, you know, we see that as much more of a rehab product for somebody coming out of a situation to get movement back. A TheraCycle is just that. It's a therapy bike, and it's going to help them reduce symptoms and it's going to help them gain back motor function and going to help them gain back mobility. You know, those are the kind of the big keys. And then the other thing with the TheraCycle is that aside from the neurological benefits, there's physical benefits where we talked about motor skills, but it's also building strength back. It's building back stamina. It's building back aerobic capacity. You know, so that's the second piece. The third piece is cognition. A lot of folks we work with have a lot of cognitive issues. You know, they can't make decisions quickly. They lose focus. Um, and they, they really have a hard time really concentrating. And so this is the third thing. It really provides back, gives them back some of that cognition that they've lost. And the last thing is emotional. So a lot of the folks we work with, regardless of the condition, are dealing with anxiety. They're dealing with depression. They're dealing with sleep issues. You know, these are all things that you get benefits from using a TheraCycle, which again is unique and different from using a stationary bike or a new step, at least based on the research. So um, in terms of that research, 
the Cleveland Clinic is probably the best known in terms of what we call forced exercise. You know, they did their research uh, probably about 10 years ago um, with a, you know, if they had a focus group who was riding a regular stationary bike and another group who was riding who was using forced exercise. And what they found in that research, and they were working with specifically Parkinson's patients at that point. Um, so I don't know it directly relate to stroke, but the important part is that there was a 35% improvement in the UPDRS scale, which is the standardized scale for Parkinson's, in terms of their mobility and motor function. And they compared that to the group who rode a regular stationary bike that had 0% improvement in those same me measurements. So that's, that's really important. And I think there's a relationship, again, going back to neuroplasticity that goes across the spectrum, whether you have stroke, Parkinson's, MS, muscular dystrophy, you know, you, you talk about different neurological conditions. So, so that's kind of the, the, the key thing. And then the other thing, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot here, but you know, the, there's a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. So the other big thing is just the design of the product. You know, so when you look at a regular stationary bike or you look at a, a new step, you know, new step is a recumbent bike product. This is a semi recumbent bike where it's much more aligned with a regular cycling experience. Right. So a lot of our customers or a good number of customers have ridden a bike before. And there's a comfort level, you know, typically you know how to ride a bike, you get on the bike and you pedal, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with TheraCycle. There's a comfort to this. When you're going in a recumbent situation, mm -hmm. like a new step, you're sitting low and you're pedaling up. And that's not always very comfortable for somebody. You know, this is much more conducive to what they're used to doing. You know, so that's that piece in terms of new step. The other thing that's really important about the TheraCycle and compared to the new step is the upper body and core exercise. So a TheraCycle provides full body exercise. So that handlebar is controlled by the motor and what it mimics is a rowing motion or weightlifting bench press motion that the user is not only working their lower body and getting that you know that, that that benefit there, but it's the upper body, and then that also pulls in the core, because again, you're using your your upper body through your core when you're doing that rowing motion, and when you're doing that that lifting motion, you can even invert your hands to get different pots, different muscles in your upper body to get you know benefit. So um, the other pieces uh, in terms of the benefits are in terms of the getting on the unit. You know, when you get on a stationary bike. You've got to hurdle your leg over a middle bar generally. And uh, when you've got balance issues, if you have stroke, that's not such an easy thing to do. And the other thing too, the bike weighs about 215 pounds. So it's not a very easy thing to push over. If you're getting on a stationary bike, you got this little saddle seat mm -hmm. and you got this bike that weighs maybe 70 to 100 pounds, it's pretty easy to tip it over or you fall over when you're on it. That wouldn't happen with the TheraCycle because it's specifically designed for somebody who's got a neurological situation and who's got balance issues, who's got gait issues. So when you get on, you literally walk through, you sit on the seat, you got two sidebars, you're able to adjust yourself. You got a recumbent bike seat that's very secure. Um, and it provides, it reduces anxiety and it provides a comfort level because you know you're gonna have a safe riding experience that's gonna be beneficial. So long answer to a short question, but there's a lot of things that are unique and different about a TheraCycle versus a new step or a regular stationary bike. Yeah, no, there's a lot to unpack there. Really, first of all, really good explanation of neuroplasticity. Um, and one of the things that, that Mike and I, in some of our research, we came away from the last International Stroke Conference and that the theme was around the future of, there were two themes. One is about the future of stroke recovery being in the home. And one of the reasons they account for that is when they when they look at the total of reps, and this goes back to neuroplasticity, the time to get to a clinic, to, to set up, to get your ride, wait for your ride, the, the time crunch on the present day, the way rehab is, they actually did studies where the patient going into therapy actually walked away doing 32 reps. And we know the volume to drive that change and fire those new connections is in the hundreds of reps. So when you have a product like yours, and I totally agree that with their statement about the futures in the home, we just see all this great innovation and your product is designed to be a perfect fit because it's safe, it has 
has those, you know, I know you've been around for those for, for 85 plus years, mm -hmm. but it was meant and built to last. And I can just add that, you know, going back to my days in college, I think I share with you, Peter, my first time here, I used to deliver these bikes yeah. to patients' home, and home fitness was just starting to emerge as a thing. And I can tell I'll you the joy. Full circle. Full circle, circle, yeah, to be back and actually. We've got a couple that you can take home. No, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. we got a couple of deliveries. So they have the strength on Is that what you're trucking? Is the living trucks running Absolutely. out there for me? It's ready to go. We got to hurry this up. <laughs> but I, can, <laughs> I just remember the, the, the joy of it. And, and part of my job was to help onboard after after getting the product safely in the home and seeing an individual with Parkinson's, with MS, and also seeing athletes who used it for some of the features you brought about that you can you can work against the motor, you can turn the bike handlebars around and get that full body work on it. If you've never tried and after this is over, I'm going to get Mike on and put him through a three minute interval, see if he can uh, well, stand yeah, up I've, to the task. I've used one of the, um, I know you probably took, you know, similar concept, the um, assault bike. I don't know if you've ever gotten on one of those, but it's the same thing. It's a, it's a wind powder, powered bike, you know, but you're saying that you, you have your arms going and, and you, you know, as you're saying, and, and it is a beast of work. Yeah. It's not easy. So, all those great you know points you brought up, but the, the message that we're hearing in the future is home because it's it's where you most have to use the piece of equipment. And um, you talked about some of the design features. Um, what does the future of TheraCycle look like? What what um, where where you mentioned at the beginning the areas that you you want to target? Um, can you share any any any? Um, new things coming down the pipeline that you're working on? Or? Sure, sure. Well, one thing I do want to share about the home piece that you were referring to, you know, this has been a really, really unique year for everybody, everybody everywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, we recently did a study with a stroke survivor um, that was truly incredible. And the reason I bring it up right now is because the home is really the critical piece here. And this individual, uh, which we're doing actually a documentary on uh, as we speak pretty much. So this individual had multiple strokes, was literally paralyzed and uh, had a situation where I think, you know, that the point that we came in contact with him was at a uh, American Heart Association Cycle Nation event in Providence. And, um, you know, the gentleman came in uh, basically with a cane holding his wife, uh, stumbling, walking, you know, definitely had difficulty and very compromised. And he rode the Star Cycle at that event just as a kind of a try and see if, what you think. And uh, rode for 15 minutes and it, what was amazing, we saw him walk across the room unaided, without a cane, without his wife, walk across the room and walk back. You know, it wasn't a, a huge room, but it was easily 20 feet across, maybe 30 feet. and. Uh, and it, you know, it was it's true, it was truly invigorating. And so, you know, we, we took that gentleman, and uh, you know, we ended up uh, having him on a theracycle at his home uh, over. It turned out to be an 18 month, 16 to 18 month period. And we did uh, the study with the um, evaluation at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then evaluation you know, part of the way through, and then we had a final evaluation. And the, amount, the results were incredible in terms of, of their improvement. And the most important thing is that that individual was, because of COVID, was not able to get their therapy that they were started with, that stopped yeah. because the, the mm -hmm. clinic shut down. And literally the only thing that this individual had was a TheraCycle for pretty much that entire period. Yeah. And we, you know, we spoke to their neurologist, physiatrist, and, uh, and, and they confirmed, and, and we had a PT who also confirmed the results and had, you know, the measurements to really back up what we were seeing. Um, but the neurologist really clarified what, what we were seeing in the sense that comparing it to what her other patient base, what she saw from them over this COVID situation, he was the standout. He was the guy that, that just really saw major improvement versus the vast majority of her patients, which saw decline because he couldn't get to therapy.
Yeah. And so yeah, that was really uh, a true, true uh, motivator and um, just, just really amazing uh, finding. And the point I'm making is that the ability to have something in the home that you don't have to worry about inclement weather, you don't have to worry about getting to the gym, you don't have to worry about whether the, you know, the, the facility is going to get closed for some reason or the PT is going to be out. You have this product at your home that you're able to use day in, day out. It's assistive so you don't have to worry how you feel that day because you know you're going to get the assistance you need to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. And you know it's going to have benefits to your long-term health to help you improve dramatically your mo motor skills and your mobility. So that point you made about in-home therapy being the future has so much resonance and importance to the future of therapy and where it's going and where it has to go from a cost standpoint. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so if you think about the cost that, that Medicare and Medicaid pay today or our government pays, it's astronomical with you know people being out on, on workman's comp or short-term disability or what have you and or putting people even into nursing homes or, or to hospice. You know, these are all government funded programs that if you can keep somebody moving, healthy, improving, the, the ramifications from a cost standpoint just to our government is, is astronomical. And you're talking about a product that, you know, is expensive from the standpoint of an investment for an individual, but compared to the cost of what our government spends on taking care of these individuals as they get sicker and sicker, and yeah. you know, they go to therapy for three months, and then that's covered, and then they send them home. They don't have equipment at home. Yeah. Right. Well, it's equally frustrating kind of looking at you know, cardiac rehab, you know, having that reimbursement model. And when you look at the neuro side of things, there's, there's nothing there that aligns from an incentive point of view. But like you say, like it makes sense when you put it on paper, right? You're saying, if you pay for it now, you'll save later. But uh, it's it's a real hard kind of turnkey to make that happen right now. But that that's what, like, you guys in this space and to kind of go take one step back, you were talking around how, you know, this past year has really elevated the, the rehab at home space. But you look at access to rehab in that sense, right? So you have the likes of kind of looking in fitness like Peloton and those guys who have really been able to move quickly during the pandemic, right? Because of they're not, you know, they're not operating in a regulated environment as much, right? So they were really able to expand and, and go country to you know, state by state. Even, you know, when, when you look at PTs and OTs trying to operate in a telehealth model through the pandemic, yeah, they opened up, but like, I know when we were speaking and you were doing some work on the telehealth side, people were so, you know, you were saying, well, I can't really care for this person and that yep. state through telehealth and that, you know, so what are some of the challenges you see as you're working? Granted, you, you're a brave man having your whole career in healthcare. I, I, I can respect you for that. I, don't know, I was in the house for his business before that, so yeah. I don't mean to <laughs> so, so, like, how, what are some of the biggest challenges, and maybe, you know, could, what kind of keeps you up at night when you look at trying to push this from where you guys are today and trying to get to that future model of saying, how do we see TheraCycle as the Peloton for rehab? Yeah, so good, good question. It kind of dovetails into David's question prior in terms of where we're going. So, you know, what keeps me up at night is, is really the uh, getting us through an execution in a timely manner of the next generation of, of TheraCycle. You know, it's truly exciting where we're going and the workflows that we have in place right now. Um, but, you know, the, the, Keeping a company growing, keeping it profitable, keeping it, uh, you know, getting it out into, into having more eyeballs see what we're doing and, and, and being involved. Um, you know, the challenge is really keeping us moving in the right direction at the right pace and, and, and getting us to that point. I kind of, the exciting part. But you know, what keeps me up at night is you know, making sure that we're staying on track with what we need to do, making sure we stay healthy, make sure we have the right people in place mm -hmm. um, or that we can bring on board and, um, and make sure that we're, probably most important is making sure we're being responsive to our customers and taking good care of them. You know, I think that you know, we, I talk to customers every day um, and 
Yeah. That's really who we're focused on. You know, when I think about what's important, it's really what our mission is. When it's really taking care of customers who've got neurological conditions and providing them with a product that is really going to be a game changer for them. You know, we are literally giving people back mobility and motor function and, and improving people's lives. That's that's a big deal. You know, I've worked for a, you know a number of companies in the healthcare space, and you know when you're at a big company and you're you know you're doing marketing or you're doing product management or you know what have you, uh, you know you're not sitting there talking to the customer who's got a Parkinson's or stroke. You know, and 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 those people, you know, they've got a challenge every single day. Just getting up out of bed can be a challenge. Just Walking to the kitchen sometimes can be a challenge. So, you know, we have, I look at it, we have responsibility to help our customers. And so when you ask me what keeps me up at night, it's how do we deliver a product that's going to be truly different and is truly going to be a game changer in these people's lives. And it really speaks to not only the efficacy of the product, but it speaks to the ability to communicate the results of what they're doing, making the experience fun and enjoyable, um, and, uh, and, and really providing something that they can see, that the user will see tangible results in a fairly short period of time that is gonna help them get on the path of recovery. You know, I hear a lot that, you know, when, when, when a patient has a stroke, or a condition or situation, they go to the PT, well, they go to the neurologist first and they get, you know, they get diagnosed. And the, the neurologist sends them to a PT typically, and the PT gives them or an OT and they, they, they give them this long list of stuff to do. And the reality is that you, a lot of times you look at that list and you're like, how the heck am I gonna get all this stuff done? Like, I, it, it's just, it's not doable. What we wanna do is be the go-to product that gets them started on the road to recovery. You know, this is something that's gentle on the body. It's enjoyable. It can be, you know, very entertaining uh, once we, you know, move it forward. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's something that, that really will be and, and can be a game changer for not only the user, but the, the whole family. Yeah, you know, when you think about it, someone who got stroke, it's not just a person who has it, it's the entire family, you know, the spouse, the kids. You know, they all gotta support that individual on a day-to-day -day basis for their daily chores and their daily responsibilities. Because all of a sudden that person's kind of knocked out of the out of the family core in terms of getting the stuff done and earning money. And uh, you know, all of a sudden your life is upside down. It changes immediately. And you know, this is a product that can really become a game changer for so many people and so many families to get functionality back faster. And that's really what we're looking to do. So um, pretty much was answering both questions at the same time. I think you did a very good job at that. Um, for sure. But it's exciting. You know, it really is like the things that we're looking at doing uh, over the next 18 months are really a game changer and gonna be just, just amazing and really, as I said before, revolutionize the therapy space um, and, and, and really just make a difference for a lot of people who are dealing with stroke or dealing with some of the other neurological conditions we deal with. So it's exciting. Well, we're gonna be following your progress closely and I have to say, I'm looking on the back wall here and I love your tagline, the power to improve lives. I've seen on, on some of your videos the power to move, and that's exactly what you provide to with being able to get that person, which you described very well, get them over that hurdle, being able to get to the next stage and and have that stimulus to see the benefits. Like exercise is the best medicine. We just I say it as a PT, we do a poor job right now prescribing it well, mm -hmm. and tools like you offer, um, you can go. You, your website is excellent. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, we want to keep on a timeline. Are there any other takeaways or any other things that you want to mention here? And you can always, you know, we're, 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 we're always welcome. We're always uh, willing to come out on another road trip and come back as we, as we see um, what, what, you, what you have in store next. But a lot of the, the, the science and the things you mentioned 
we can put on the, um, the website and the show notes and we'll include any other information or any other offers you might uh, want to um, put out there for our community. Uh, but uh, but um, Well, I think that you know, the single biggest thing that I would say to you is that what we, everything we do on a day in day out basis is with our customer in mind, whether it's a service call or if it's uh, you know selling to the customer, we are always looking to make sure that one, it's a good fit, and two, that we're really re responsive to the needs of our customer on a day in day out basis. If they had it for ten years or they're just looking to buy it today, and we'll continue to have that same focus on our customer. Um, and to make sure that we're, we're taking care of that customer, but really being responsive to their needs and doing what I always say is do the right thing, whether it costs us money or not, is not really much of a concern. And I truly believe that if we take care of our customer and treat them right, that you know, we, we will do well as a company. And, uh, and, that, and that's really key, is really taking care of your customer, understanding their needs, both short and long term, and making sure that you're being responsive to those needs on a day in day out basis. It's well put, well put. And I speak for Dave and I when we wish you the best of luck with, with everything. I know it'll be, you know, it's, you've been on a journey and the journey will continue, but I think you've, you've paved the right path and it'll be interesting to see you know, how you shape up here in the next few years. But the market in general is going to be changing and I think we're, you're, you're well positioned. So. Wish you all the best, and yeah, we'll you know we'll put the the um just there cycle dot com or you know what's how could people find you, reach out you know if there's any maybe clinical trials or anything happening that people might want to be involved in in any way is there anything that they could do to reach out? Yes, a good 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 point. So uh, you know theracycle dot com is our website, okay. um, and you know we are doing a couple of uh, research projects that that we have in play right now. One is with. Uh, uh, University of Rhode Island uh, in their neural health space um, and then our health sciences and then uh, we're also working with our Arizona State University okay. um, and then a couple other uh, projects that we're also working on so you know we, we've got some some things that we're doing you know one of the things that we uh, would like to see happen which would be really important is to is to get a HICPIC code or reimbursement code uh, for the product so one of the one of the uh, focuses is in this research is to really validate the efficacy of the product for these types of conditions um, and again you know the focus is on, on efficacy and on validation um, and you know at the end of the day you know we can save the, the, the government a lot of money um, but more importantly we can we can keep people well in their homes rather than moving them off to facilities yeah. or what have you and uh, you know, so that's really key. So you know, these research projects are important because they really help to validate the uh, the efficacy of the product. Brilliant. Well, yeah, definitely. You know, wish you all the best with that. And you know, the again, you know, the, there's there's a chance to, to become, and, and that's when you know we went back to that fitness comparison. You know, the fitness side of things, we're able to scale. No regulatory holdback. You know, people are. It's, lower cost, but yeah, when it comes into this space, it's a hard upfront cost. I can speak for, you know, my mom with that, you know, going through as a 30 year old when she, you know, had her stroke coming home, young child at home, trying to raise a family. The last thing she probably could afford was that. But at the same time, you know, if there was that right, you know, um, reimbursement side of things where they saw the incentive to say, hey, we'll pay for this when you're 30, because now she's paying a lot more money than that doing PT every week, you know? so. Yeah, it's, you know, but it's going to be a bit of a hurdle, but I think, you know, we, we, we should be able to see see some change hopefully in the next, in, you know, the coming years on that side. But we'll wrap it up there, Dave. Yeah, this has been great. Thank you, Peter, for sharing your time, your insight, and your facility with us today for Absolutely. our first remote No Show podcast. So it, with that... It's been fun. It's I been think, fun. Thanks for yeah, having me. We'll, uh, we'll say that's a wrap. Thank awesome. you.